worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. Hello, EB family. My name is John Dyser. I'm one of the shepherds here at East Brainerd. I'm here with Bob White, another one of our shepherds, to give some needed information concerning our return to live worship next week. In an effort to maintain our social distance, I'll lead off and describe where we are in our restart, and Bob will describe what to expect next week and lead us in a prayer. First of all, as we embarked back into live worship, once again, we would like to give a special thanks to our staff who has done wonders in adapting. First, in helping coordinate emergency response for our church members when the tornado swept through this spring. And secondly, also adapting so quickly to the online and video technical challenges due to COVID. Now, currently planning and implementing a multi-service worship, which will keep our members as safe as possible. We'd also like to thank to a special COVID medical risk evaluation team that was recently formed. As your shepherds, we have been extremely concerned about both your physical and spiritual health. To this end, we recently asked Chris Marcus to lead a COVID medical risk evaluation team whose purpose was to provide recommendations to the eldership regarding live worship. Chris is a healthcare administrator with over 25 years in the field. His teammates include Dr. Trent Sutton, who's an internal medicine physician 
and Amy Holloway, who is a nurse practitioner. Both of these healthcare providers have extensive clinical experience with our vulnerable population. Uh, another team member is Chad Wartman, who is an administrator at Boyd Buchanan School and deals regularly with the Hamilton County Health Department on behalf of the school. Finally, Jeff Corbin rounds out the team with his, his experience as a manager of Chick-fil-A, which has continued to function effectively during this pandemic. This team has been valuable in providing sound recommendations for which we greatly, greatly appreciate. Now, the team looked at the two primary factors involved in the decision to resume live worship. Now, the first factor is our community risk profile. That's just a term for determining how prevalent the virus is in our area and whether it's getting better or worse. By looking closely at the Hamilton County Health Department data, we've seen that the number of new cases dropped somewhat since July and remained fairly stable in August. The more recent numbers are encouraging, but that could change at any time. The second factor is the national demographic data and personal health risk factors associated with COVID-19. The CDC data shows very, very clearly that age is a significant factor in determining the risk associated with this virus. The risk of COVID leading to a serious illness, hospitalization, or even death is significantly higher for older individuals, especially those with other health conditions. So what does all this mean? Well, simply put, because of the frequency of new cases in Hamilton County appearing to have stabilized and have reduced slightly over the last month, a cautious restart of EB gatherings can be made using appropriate personal precautions. This does not mean that the risk is zero, but manageable, especially for the younger members. Now, concerning our, our more vulnerable at-risk members, the, the team identified the serious consequences which we all know about which can ensue if the COVID virus is contracted. The CDC data indicated those over 65 are at risk, and especially those with other health conditions. Unfortunately, complete safety can never be guaranteed no matter what precautions are implemented at gatherings. The team recommended that those having significant personal health risks serious, seriously consider online worship. That option until the community risk profile decreases significantly. Now it is the elders belief that the decision whether to attend any in-person gathering must be an individual decision, but the individual should not feel compelled to attend any EB function during this COVID pandemic. <clears throat> we want everyone to know that they are welcome, but we also want to re reiterate that it is important to protect your own health and safety. So as you make your plans, consider the advice of health professionals and your own personal risk. The complete list of CDC personnel health risk factors can be found on the CDC website, but we're also placing a link to the website on our church website, along with the EB committee's report for your convenience. Otherwise, we are making preparations for as many safety precautions and worship opinions, options rather, as possible. So what should we expect? Well, I'm going to turn this over to Bob for this information and a prayer at the end. Our plan is to initially offer three separate worship opportunities of similar content as well as a separate Hispanic worship service. The reason for multiple services is that sufficient social distancing is needed as well as the need to provide more extensive levels of protection for some. The initial worship service plan starting next week are as follows. 
online service. First of all, we plan to continue offering online viewing even after we return to live worship for those who prefer to worship at home. We encourage those with significant personal health risk factors to use this option. Second service, vulnerable in-person in service. Designed for those who desire a higher level of risk mitigation or those with moderate levels of personal health risk factors. This live worship service will be in the Family Life Center starting at 8 o'clock a.m. Face coverings are required at all times as a safeguard for everyone in this area. A temperature check will be conducted as a safeguard and a minimum six feet spacing will be maintained. Three, regular in-person service designed for those without any personal health risk factors. This live worship service will be in the main auditorium starting at 9.15 a.m. Face covering are highly recommended, especially until seated and while singing. A minimum six feet spacing will be maintained. Also, a Hispanic service is scheduled in the Family Life Center at 11 o'clock a.m. Thank you for your continued support and prayers. We are excited about coming back together soon. Let's pray. Father, we truly are excited to be able to get back together and worship you in song, praise, and learn from your word. It's been six months away and, and many of us are, are alone and, and uh, we yearn for those uh, experiences of being together with community. Father, thank you for being there for us and for protecting those through this crisis. Thank you for giving us safety. And we continue to ask for your blessings as we attempt to get back together on a, on a safe basis uh, to worship you. We uh, continue to ask for you to be with our community. And as we, as we participate one with another, let us uh, submit to each other. Let us serve each other. In Jesus' name, amen. I appreciate John and Bob being willing to come and sit down with you just for a few minutes to talk about our return to our campus. You know, this has been a very difficult process. We are in uncharted territory and I'm very thankful for our elders and for the time that they have put in and consideration on how best to bring our church family back here together so that we might be able to encourage each other. As they mentioned, we're going to be having multiple services so that we can meet the needs of multiple people within our church family. So 8 o'clock is going to be a mask required service. 9.15 is a mask recommended service. There will be an online broadcast that will be available at 9.15. And then we will have an Hispanic service at 11 a.m. Now, all of these services will be taking place on different locations on our campus, so be sure to continue to watch your emails, check social media. This information is going to be on our website. We don't want there to be any confusion. Feel free to reach out to our church office. Any questions that you have, we want to answer them so that when September 13th comes, we can, as many as possible, come back to 7745 East Brainerd Road and enjoy praising God together. So let's talk about preparing for Sunday. Before you even come on campus, we need for you to do something that will help us out tremendously. Because of our desire to properly social distance, we are limited in our seating capacity. So we need for you to go online and tell us if you are going to be coming. You will find this available on our website where you can easily check the service time that you are going to be attending, tell us how many in your family will be here. That way we will know what to expect. Don't worry if you are unable to get online, you can call the church office, let us know which service you are going to be attending. And don't worry if you think, wow, how are we going to be able to get everybody here? We have contingency plans in place and we have plans in order to be able to bring as many people to campus as safely possible. So do us a big favor, go online, sign up, let us know that you'll be here September 13th. 
We also need your help when it comes to accessing our campus. If you will be attending the 8 o'clock service that will be in the FLC, please enter our campus from the Jenkins Road access. If you're going to be at our 915 service taking place in our auditorium, we ask that you access our campus from East Brainerd Road. This is going to help with the different transitions as we're going to have multiple services starting and ending at different times. This will continue for the 11 o'clock service that our Hispanic congregation will be a part of in our FLC. So remember, if you're coming to the auditorium, come onto our campus and leave our campus via East Brainerd Road. If you're going to be in our FLC, please use our Jenkins Road entrance and exit. So here is the question everybody's asking. What about the mask? We all have opinions on them, right? Because of the health environment that we are in and because of the health considerations of our membership, we are having an eight o'clock mask required service where we're asking those who attend to wear the mask upon entrance, exit, and while participating in the service. And then a 915 mask recommended service where we are recommending that you wear the mask upon your entrance, exit, and also while singing, but it is not going to be required. All right, so you're on our campus, you have your mask on, and you're walking towards our building. As you approach, be sure to tell us that you are here. You'll see a table and there'll be a happy, welcoming individual that will check you off, so to speak, to let us know exactly how many people are coming in to the building. Again, it's just a way of helping us know the capacity that we're looking at for that day. You're also going to be given the opportunity to choose one of three bracelets in order to indicate your receptivity to interaction very limited interaction, you choose the red bracelet. If you want to have cautious interaction, you choose the yellow. And if you are comfortable with social interaction, then you choose the green. Now you don't have to get a bracelet at all if you don't want to. This is just a way for you to communicate to others how you feel so that we don't have to be all uncomfortable with, should I give you an elbow or not? After you enter our doors, you're going to see an area where you will find Ziploc baggies with prepackaged communion containers. Go ahead and stop by, pick up the package that represents the number that you need for your family. One, two, three, hey, maybe even four. And for some of you Robertsons, we'll just put them all together, all right? But get the number that you need, take them to your seat, and look forward to the joy that we can share in communion together. I know that this has been a lot of information and there's a lot of moving parts. So many things having to go on behind the scenes in order to prepare to safely have a return here to our campus. Thank you so much in advance for your understanding, for your flexibility. All the information that's been shared here today is going to be available on our website at eastbrainerchurch.org. Feel free also to call our office with any questions that you have and be excited about the opportunity that we have on September 13th to be together. We can't wait to see you. Hello, church family, and welcome to EB Online. We're so glad that you joined us today, whether on campus, in your EB at home groups, or maybe you're on the beach enjoying this Labor Day weekend. Either way, we're glad that you're worshiping with us. There are a lot of things happening with our ministries here at East Brainerd, and if you would like to give to any of them, you can do so online. And we would also love to connect with you, so make sure that you do that as well. Enjoy today's worship. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I'm 
and oh, he'll take me through. Though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, no, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. church family. Wherever you may be, hey, thanks so much for making us part of your day. 
Over the last eight weeks, we have opened up our Bibles to the Gallery of Acts, and we have watched as Luke painted a picture of first century worshipers. He's not looking at intimate details. He's only dealing in the broad strokes, focusing our attention on a small group of Jesus followers who are asking, well, now what do we do? You see, something really big had just happened in their lives, and Luke wants us to step back and not miss the forest for all the trees. He is summarizing the actions of worshipers who, in large and small groups, on Sundays, Mondays, and, and all the days, survived by devoting themselves to a shared spiritual experience and a shared spiritual community. Now, it's that lack of shared experience and community that has impacted us so much over the last five months. The distance and isolation brought on by the COVID pandemic has left many of us lonely. We feel anxious, angry, depressed, and a lot of us are just plain confused. So in the midst of our uncertainty, we have returned to the writings of an old friend to find comfort and assurance. The picture that Luke paints in Acts of, of those early believers, well, it served to remind us of what to do when, well, when we don't know what to do. So over the last eight weeks, our church community has, well, we've prayed stubbornly and we've sought the guidance of God's Spirit. We've been reminded that God is for us and that He is still present right now in our lives. And that even when we stumble and fall, hey, there's always a second chance. We've also discovered that we have a lot in common with the people in Acts chapter 2. We share the same baptism, the same spirit, the same devotion to God, the same devotion to one another. And if we didn't realize it before, we are now beginning to understand that we cannot make this journey on our own. You know, our weekly gatherings are important, but the church has always been about the community that gathers. Church is about the everyday, the everyday generosity of the community, the everyday hospitality of the community, the everyday inclusion within that community. And friends, that generosity is attractive. That hospitality is inviting. That inclusion, well, it's exciting. Hey, it's been fun. It's been a fun eight weeks of study, but, but now we have to say, now what? I mean, now what do we do as we prepare to come together again after, after being away for five months? Well, I want us to pay attention to Luke one more time. I want to make sure that we see the big picture. I mean, people are trusting in Jesus. The community is sharing life together. And all of this is pointing towards something. And so Luke is going to zero in on a moment. And I want you to be part of that story. Oftentimes we read a story and we place ourselves in the shoes of certain people in the narrative. You begin to see the story through one particular set of eyes. And it's one particular set of eyes that I want you to look through today. Though it's not primarily where you might take yourself, I think it's where God wants to lead you. Now, as we begin our study, let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you leapt for joy? Can you answer that? The last time when there was something so unshakable within you that even though you were facing the pressures of school and relationships and deadlines and sickness, when was the last time you leapt for joy? Or maybe more to the point, when was the last time you leapt for joy in the presence of the Lord? Look in Acts chapter 3. One day, Peter and John were, were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Three times a day, Jews went to pray at the temple. 9 a.m., 12 p.m., and 3 p.m. It was the normal thing to do. You go to the temple and seek God's ear. As we read Acts, we get the impression that, well, this is still something that the apostles and the other believers continue to do. And we might wonder why. I mean, they believe in Jesus. They have the Spirit. Why are they going to the temple? Well, I wonder if possibly it's because they, they go to connect with the people. People at the temple are seeking God. So they go and declare, hey, we have seen him. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Peter and John had someone in mind that they wanted to talk to about Jesus, a friend or a neighbor perhaps. Perhaps they were going to rely on the Spirit to, to lead them to someone, someone who is at the temple seeking God through prayer. So I don't think it's a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that we find them joining others who are seeking God. It says, now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple. The temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Now I want you to stop right here in the text. And I want you to think about this man. Since birth, he could not walk. 
Since birth, he remained an infant of dependency, totally dependent on others to carry him and to care for him. It's a humbling, poverty-stricken existence. There's no medical insurance. There's no social safety net. There's no work for him. All he can do is be carried day in and day out to the beautiful gate and beg, ironically, beg God's people for help. And he's gotten used to this routine, continually carried, day in, day out, get up, have someone carry me to the gate and beg. And he's got to get there before prayer time is over because if he can strategically place himself within the view of the people, people who are already predisposed to God, well, maybe he can get enough money for daily bread. I mean, this guy is trapped. It will never get any better for him. He has been living this empty life day in, day out, month in, month out, year in, year out, and there is no hope for his life. Can you see through his eyes? He sees Peter and John. And what do you expect him to ask for? Can I have some money? Something to go in my cup or my bag, this, this same container that I have been carrying around for years. What would you ask for? Peter looked straight at him, as did John, it says in verse 4. Now this is more than a mere glance. The, the word carries the idea of intensity. Peter is seeing the whites of this man's eyes. I wonder how many people walk by this man day after day and because they don't want to see him, because they don't want to help him, well, they look in the other direction. They step over him. They walk around him. Oh, they see him, mind you, but they never look into his eyes. That's what he's used to. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. The cup is out. He's ready. And then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. And taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. Now remember, Luke is a doctor, and there are times in his writings when he will use words that express his medical understanding of what is happening. And he uses a word right here in our text that gives the idea of completely restoring the man's ability to walk. I don't know what it looked like. Obviously, he was crippled in some way. Everyone knew it. But somehow muscles begin to strengthen and ligaments begin to heal. Bones begin to straighten. And this man stands up. Can you imagine all the people? Imagine all the people who walked by and missed it. You know, the irony is that this event happens right in the midst of thousands of religious people hurriedly on their way to worship God. And I'm afraid that we can be so busy, so busy doing the work of God that we miss where God is working. They're averting their eyes and they're missing what is happening. I hope that they're about to see it. Look with me in verse 8. It says he jumped to his feet and he began to walk. Do you realize the man is doing now two things that he had never done in his entire life? Walk and jump. I mean, how do you think that felt? Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping. What would you do? Well, one, I would follow the guy who just told me to, to stand up and walk because, well, I want more. He's trying out his new legs. He's running around in the temple. And people don't run around in the temple. People don't jump up and down in the temple. This is where the presence of God is. And God forbid that we do something to disturb the peace and the hustle and bustle of the people who are offering sacrifices and prayers. What would you do if God had changed your life? What do we do so often? <laughs> well, it's nice to walk. Let's go pray. What, what do we do? You know, this guy gets it. He's walking and jumping and praying. Praising God. What would you do if God changed your life? What do we do when God changes our life? Look at verse 9. When all the people saw him, saw him disturbing the peace, this was not some sort of artificially induced moment. This wasn't singing some song and, hey, let's clap now, all right? I mean, we have to be coaxed into joy, don't we? It's a shame. But if God has changed your life, no one is asking no one is coaxing. In fact, I don't care. I don't care if you ask. This is just the way I am. I am joyful and I'm going to try out my legs and I'm going to carry out my spiritual jump 
And I want the world to know that God has done something wonderful for me. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. They knew the guy. This wasn't some charlatan. This was the guy they saw day in and day out, month after month, year after year. This was an amazing event, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Can you see this? Not through the eyes of the people, but through the eyes of the man. A man who had never walked, never jumped. Can you see? Can you feel the genuine, sincere, heartfelt joy? Now look, I know that moments like this can be contrived, but, but can you see through his eyes? Can you see your new legs? If so, then now what? I mean, it seems to me that this is how we should look if God has changed our lives, if God has given us a new beginning. Though there were hundreds of beggars who lined the streets and gates of Jerusalem, Luke is giving us here a snapshot, a picture, a moment in time, And he is showing us what happens when the hurt and pain and unfairness of this world come in contact with the kingdom of God. And he is showing us the natural response of those who have been healed by God. So when was the last time you leapt for joy? When you didn't worry about what others thought of you or what someone might say. You see your legs and so you jump while at school, at home, on the job, or or heaven forbid, while at a church service. Can you see yourself, can you see yourself in the text, begging for a few coins, and God looks at you and says, I've got so much more to give you. I've got something better for you. Few are physically handicapped. More are emotionally or psychologically handicapped. But all of us are spiritual beggars. Everyone watching today. And you can go through all the extreme makeovers that you want, but it is an empty way of life. Just going to class so you can pursue a career and perhaps get married, have a family, buy a home, get a boat, plan for retirement. Guys, it's a beggar's way of life with no hope until you find Jesus. We come to God with what we think we need and God gives us what we can't even imagine. We come to God wanting Him to fix a a small problem over here and all the while He wants to give us new life. What do you really need? You know, you might just need to pause this message right now and give some thought to where you truly are in life. Face your insecurities and fears. Acknowledge your pride. Admit your sin. The sin that has damaged your relationships, broken your spirit, and maybe crushed your dreams. Maybe you need right now to cry out to God. Scripture promises that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So go ahead. I'll wait. Pause this video and spend some time just being honest with God. You're a beggar. Be honest with Him about what you really need. Okay. So why don't we start to wrap things up? While the beggar is jumping up and down, the attention is not only on him, but on Peter and John. They were responsible, it seemed, for all the uproar, and it was exactly as God had planned. Look with me in in verse 11. It says, While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if it's by our own power or godliness that we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. And I love what he says here in verse 16. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and have known was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Peter uses this moment to deflect attention from himself and shine the light on God. He points the people to Jesus. After all, that was the purpose of all the miracles that we read about in Scripture. The miracles, the signs as they were sometimes called, were meant to be a launching pad to move people closer to God. 
It was a look. Now listen moment. Understand miracles, well, they do not compel people to believe. They only invite. Thousands of people would witness Jesus perform miracle after miracle. And when it was all over, how many actually believed? Only a few. Miracles were not a magic wand, but they had their place. Look, now listen. Friend, you are a walking miracle. You, if you are a believer, you have been changed by God. You have been healed. The sun or the sin that had crippled you and, and decimated your life, your relationships, decimated your soul, it's been removed. You have, you have new legs. So what do you do? How do you respond? But when was the last time you leapt for joy? It's an important question. Because the joy of a changed life will provide you with the opportunity to talk about Jesus. Peter took this moment right here, this moment of unbridled joy, and used it to offer the people something even better than new legs. He spoke to them about Jesus, about the wiping away of sin, about a refreshing that comes from God. Well, what's better than new legs? Well, how about a clean soul? How about a fresh start? How about a new beginning? I mean, you think this guy's jumping for joy? Just wait until you experience a new life with God. That was Peter's message. The joy of your changed life will provide you with opportunities to talk about Jesus. So when was the last time someone saw you leap for joy and then ask why? Sometimes I think about how we evaluate the success of our, of our influence as a church. Is it efficiency or is it effectiveness? Efficiency is doing things right. So we encourage people to pray right and sing right and, and serve right. But how many of us do things right, but our lives don't change? Do you understand what I'm saying? There's no joy because we see no change. No need for God. No desire to be whole. Efficiency or effectiveness. Efficiency is doing things right. Effectiveness is doing the right things. You see, we can go to the temple and we can pray three times a day. We can go buy the Christianity book. But I, I'm just troubled. I'm troubled if our lives are not reflecting serious, joyful life change. Pope Innocent II once had a conversation with Thomas Aquinas back in the 12th century. The Pope was counting the money that had been given to the church. And he is to have said, you see, Thomas, the church can no longer say, silver and gold, I have none. And Thomas supposedly responded, that's true, but neither can the church say, rise and walk. With all the focus Western civilization gives to doing efficient church ministry, are anyone's lives actually changing? They shouldn't be that hard to spot. It's the ones, the ones who see the difference. The ones who know that they have been saved from a beggar's existence. They will be the ones that are filled with joy. And they will be the ones who are talking about Jesus. And the Lord will add to their number daily those who are being saved. So Christian, when was the last time you leapt for joy? See yourself. See your new legs. Live your changed life. Start jumping. Start sharing. Go out and cause a disturbance this week. And be sure to bring the joy of your changed life with you when you return to our campus next Sunday. We'll see you then. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you've captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got love. I've got true love instead of pain. Freedom in my Lord. There's freedom though you've captured me. I've got joy. I've got joy instead of mourning. And you give me joy down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul down deep in my soul and you give me joy 
down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got love, I've got true love instead of pain. Freedom in my Lord, there's freedom though you've captured me. I've got joy, I've got joy instead of mourning. And you give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy, yeah, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Never been so free, never been so free, caught in your love for me. Never been more secure, knowing your never been so free, never been so free, caught in your love for me. Never been more secure, knowing that you give me joy down deep in my soul, deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, and you give me joy down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, you give me joy. As we gather for communion this morning, I want to kind of continue those thoughts on joy that Chris shared with us this morning. You know, like the man in Acts chapter 3, as we take communion, we find new life, we find healing, we find rescue in what Jesus has done for us. And we can't help but share it with the world, share that joy that comes through the love and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So as you take communion this morning, whether in your homes, here on our campus, with your families, maybe you're just by yourself, you do so with great joy. As Christians around the world gather this morning, we can take joy in what Jesus has done for us. So let's pray together. Father, we love you and we're thankful for your son, Jesus. We're thankful that you have showed us what it is like to live on this earth in relationship with you. We're thankful that we have great joy because of who Jesus was, who Jesus is, and what Jesus does for us. We thank you for the bread. We thank you for the cup. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name.
Thank you so much for joining us today for our online worship. Hey, next week, hey, we get to be here. Are you excited yet? Are you looking forward to it? Are you ready to give a big woo when we're able to come back together? Hey, we look forward to seeing you next week. Let's give thanks to God. Father, thank you so much for the way that you've watched over us over these last five and a half months, the way that you have comforted our congregation, the way that you've encouraged us. Father, I pray that for for those of us who are able to be back together, that, that you will give us a, a joy that is contagious. Father, for those who are going to continue to be worshiping from home, Father, remind them that they are just as much a part of our church family as anyone else. Use all these different avenues in order to encourage and uplift. And Father, we look forward to being able to praise you, not just here, but Father, in your presence. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Good morning, EB Kids. We're so glad you're joining us again this week for Kids Praise. We've got another good one, so I think I hear Mr. Mark and Mr. Cheezer. Let's go.
something with us? I heard. How about, how, about, heard. how about the smiles a few weeks ago we had when we said, I'm happy today. Oh, yes, I'm happy today in Jesus Christ. I'm happy today because he's taken all my sins away. And that's why I'm happy today. Because we're singing. I'm smiling singing today. Oh, yes, I'm singing today in Jesus Christ, I'm singing today because he's taken all my sins away, and that's why I'm singing today. Next, Bob, I'm praying today. Oh, yes, I'm praying today in Jesus Christ. I'm praying today because he's taken all my sins away. Oh, yes, I am praying today. All three, and let's do that. Let's, uh, let's go over here and see what we need to be praying about at church. Because I know our boys and girls, they pray when things yes. are good. They, yes. And they pray when, when we need God's help in things. Right, too. yes. They're good little prayer warriors, aren't they? They are. They good are. prayer warriors. Uh, the first thing I want to be thankful for is that those hurricanes weren't bad. Hurricanes weren't bad. Yes. They could have been a Hurricane lot. Dora. We dodged a bullet there. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. A lot of rain. But Hurricane Dora. Dora. Okay. Hurricane Dora. I mean, naming a hurricane after a dear character yes. from Sesame Street? Yes. Well, is it Lauren? Is it not Dora? Hurricane Lauren. Lauren. You that from the last week. It's uh, Laura. I, I, Laura. Can, I can imagine Hurricane that Laura. we prayed for Hurricane Dora last no, week. I mean, Laura. Laura. I'm going to draw a baby if you don't watch out. And uh, boys and girls, I'm so glad back to school is going well. Yes. Uh, back to preschool school. got started. Back to school has gone very well. So without, without a hitch, work. all of our, our yeah. church leaders right. and everybody that's kept us on track. And church leaders. We had our parking lot prayer night. Yes. And that went well too. Yes. Parking. We, we got to do that again. <laughs> Except maybe this time add like, uh, you know, going and getting candy. Parking yes. lot. Well, that's coming up too. It won't be long. It'll be candy to it. I know. And make it truck or treat. It'll, 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 that's just mine. It'll be long. It'll be long. And for all of our sick people, thankfully everybody's sick getting people. better, so our sick people and stuff to heal up. Mm -hmm. Sick people. Um, and and, and uh, let's pray for our country. country. You know, we have uh, a lot of big decisions coming up for our country. And, you know, just like at church, we want everybody to get along, and we want everybody to get along in our country, too. Yes, we do. We do. We do. Okay. Mr. Mark, why don't you pray for those things we listen Sure. Before? Isn't it great that we can pray uh, any place, anytime, anywhere? You mean like right now? Like right, 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 right. Or we can wait five minutes. Well, no, we can wait. You can or pray, you, can... you know, we can pray at Lake Wendy. You can pray at Way home. You can pray at school. Heavenly Father, thank you for your many blessings, uh, the blessing of a new day, the blessing of, of, of rainfall to uh, refresh the ground and uh, start anew, the, the, the blessing of a changing season coming up, fall, uh, the, the, the leaves changing colors and uh, just the beauty of, of, of your kingdom. It just re reminds everybody about and how, how great you are. Be with those individuals that are sick. Watch over there and protect them. Be with the kids as they continue to go back to school. Be with their teachers. Watch over them, protect them. Protect the frontline workers, um, nurses, doctors, in the ERs, and the ICUs. Protect the frontline workers that deliver our groceries. Those essential walker, workers that, that we rely upon and, just, and we just take for granted. And we need to... Um, air, offer a prayer of thanksgiving uh, to those individuals. Thank you for your the leadership of this church that has shepherded us through this uh, most difficult times. Uh, thank you for the small group ministry. Thank you for this wonderful church family, a church family that even through this rough pandemic is still there to support us in times of need, love us in times of want, and uh, nurture us back to health if we're sick. Thank you for that church family, dear Father. Uh, thank you for your son, Jesus, who, because of him and through him, one day will be with you in heaven. 
It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good prayer, Mr. Mark. Excellent prayer. Boys and girls, welcome to Kids Praise. Mr. Cheeser got his Bible out, and I found such a great story today. We got some activity back here. I found such a great story today, and, and I know you're at home, but I, I just wish I had somebody here at church to share it with. Uh, I? What? I? Tater's here. Mr. Cheeser, how's it going? What's up, Tater? How have you been doing? Did you not see you come to church today? I might see you since uh, last September. No, March. It's just March. Been since that's March. Been, it's been March. Yeah. yeah. I just came yeah, down off the mountain. It's good to see you. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. I just yes. came. I've been working so much, you know, with my potato patch, and been up there on Sand Mountain, just go, you know, from sun up to sundown. You know that is. Getting I those potatoes. Oh, yeah. hey, Taylor, listen. Potatoes. Listen. Yes. I was telling the boys and girls that I had gotten my Bible out and I found a great Bible lesson, uh, and, and I didn't have anybody to share it with. I'm so glad you're here. Do you mind if you just kind of sit back and? And let me Mr. Share Cheeser, with you. you have the tater. Okay. The tater has your full attention. Okay. Pay close attention. I'm Boy, not going to think about anything else about but about this lesson. Okay. <laughs> just just listen to what Mr. Cheeser has to say here. I am ready to listen. So, boys and girls, as I tell Tater the lesson, I want you to see if you can pay attention and tell Mr. Cheeser what Tater doesn't say. What he forgets. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. I heard that, Mr. Cheeser. So, okay. All right. What's Taylor, the matter? what will Taylor forget? What's the matter with you? Well, you know, I've been working on I think I got some sunstroke. What? I got some stroke. I've been out in the field, Taylor digging. You know, with my Taylor digging machine. Yeah, what? Do I feel kind of hot? Yeah, let me see. I, I feel got, hot. I've got a thermometer. I'm hot. Hold, hold still. Let me get your temperature. What is it? What is it? Oh, what it's is perfect. It? In fact, of course it's perfect. It's a little low. It's a little I'm low. the tater. Yep. I'm the tater. Yep. I'm glad things are going well for you. Well, 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 not really that well. What? You know, last Wednesday I was up, you know, I was digging some taters, and I got my little hoe in too far, yep. and I stopped. I was not wearing gloves, and when I don't wear gloves, you know, I've got a problem with my perspiration on my palms. Yeah. And unless I do some sort of, uh, you know, therapy with them, you know, I just I think I've heard this happen before. And so what happened was I do a big yank on the hoe. I see and it. It really hit my head. I see it. I, I mean, mean, I actually. Well, wait, 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 wait just a second. Wait, well, you got something for it? I've got a band aid. Hang on, just oh, one second. Oh, a band aid would be very nice. Oh, indeed. yeah. Here, come here. Yes, right. A little, uh, close, real, little gentle on it, but it's kind of sore. Oh, you split that thing bad. There you go. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, does that, feel yeah, that yeah. does yeah. make a lot of difference. Boys it does. Have, have you paid attention? I mean, what, what is Tater not saying? What about it? What else, Tater? Uh, well, you know, also, the I've been outside, you know, digging Taters. And when you dig taters, the sun is is uh, in your eyes a lot as well. And so I think I fried my uh, uh, my, my left retina. Another answer. I fried another my answer. Blood. Have you ever tried these polarized sunglasses? No. Yes. Only, try these. The try only these. ones I've tried is that Dollar Tree try them. or Dollar General. Oh, yeah. How's that look? Uh, yeah. These, these are oh, uh, these are sunglasses. Be careful. Let me put it back on. Okay, be careful. Now, can I say oh, this? Can yes. I say this to you? I've you're welcome. You. You're seen. welcome. Excuse me? Yeah, you're welcome. Sunglasses, you for, know. For for what? Oh yeah. What else? The sunglasses? Uh well, let's see. Are you I didn't say you're welcome when you gave me we check my. I can barely hear you through because your throat's so scratchy. We checked, you know, and, and my throat because of the tater dust that got down my uh, throat, and I can barely. Well, here, hang, 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 hang. Barely swallow. Where's I can girl? barely swallow. Please. I'm gonna try one more thing and see if he can say. Thank you. I can barely. <laughs> here, here, yeah. try it. Try this. Lifesaver. Oh, is is yes. Butter rum lifesaver. Butter rum so is good. my favorite lifesaver. Yes, mm, so good. That makes all the difference. Mmm, that tastes so good. Oh, that tastes really so good. Really, Tater? Yes. You're welcome. Excuse me? You're welcome. 
You're welcome. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. I thank well, you. I'm trying. Thank you. You're welcome. Sure. Yeah, you're yes. starting to get it, but I want to share a Bible story with you. A Bible and story? See if I, I can love kinda, Bible stories. See if I can kind of help your manners and, and your thinking around what somebody does for you, okay? Okay. All right, okay. You grab a chair. Grab a chair. You want a rocking chair, old man? <laughs> So listen, I'd love a rocking chair. I bet you would. I'm going to pull up this chair here. Now, Tater, this is right out of Mr. Cheeser's Bible. And mm -hmm. boys and girls, if you've got your Bibles or your phone or your computer, work with your mommy and daddy and go to the book of Luke. Matthew, Mark, Mark Luke. Remember we sing our song? Yes. Matthew, Mark, Mark, Luke. And it's in Luke. It's in chapter 17. And it's verse 11. Now, Tater, listen, Cheezer's not making this up, okay? Okay, I'm going to read this to you right out of the Bible. And it says this, Now, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, and he was traveling along the border between Samaria and, Samaria and Galilee, okay? Okay. And as he was going into a village, ten men were standing there. <sighs> no, that's not good, because not? they had leprosy. Oh. It said ten men had leprosy. Do you know what leprosy is? Mm, it's not good. It does not sound good. Well, you know that boo-boo on your head? Yes. That's nothing. Okay. That's nothing compared to leprosy. It's a, It soars on your skin, boys and girls. In fact, in the Bible times, if you had leprosy, they put you away by yourself because they didn't want you to give it to others. So not only did it hurt real bad, but other people could get it. So... Jesus walked by the ten men, and as he walked by them, they stood at a distance. And guess what they said? What? Jesus, Master, have pity on me. He basically, they were basically saying, Jesus, please heal me. Please help me. What did Jesus do? And so the story says that when he saw them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went, guess what happened? They were cleansed. Their leprosy was gone. God hollered to Jesus and he healed them. Now listen to what happens wow. after that. Okay. Now there was ten guys, right? Ten, ten men. men yes. Guys ten leprosy. men. Ten men. And ten it says, men. one of them, when he saw he was healed, he came back and he ran to God and he said, God, in a loud voice, Jesus, thank you so much. For healing me. So one came back. Do you hear what he said? Just one came back. Thank you. Yes. And Jesus said, wait, wasn't there ten of you? Wasn't there ten of you? And boys and girls, only one of those ten men came back to say thank you to God for healing them. And, you know, I was thinking about this story when I was helping you today because think about it just yes. a second. Can you think of a... A word you may have forgotten? I believe that when you put a band-aid on my forehead, I should have said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, yes. thank you, thank you. Boys and girls, we have to learn to be thankful. So when I helped Tater fix his head with a band-aid, he should have said thank you so much. And, like, and, and, and also when you took my temperature to make sure I was not sick with the ex COVID. Exactly. I you thought you might have had the thank COVID. You, thank you. Yes. I didn't say thank you. I'm sorry I didn't say thank you. And you didn't have a temp and you're healthy. Yes. And then, and then when you gave me a butter rub lifesaver for my scratchy parts throat from spending hours out in the tater fields. Digging taters. And you felt so bad. So I could go to Farmer's Market and sell the taters and buy me some Alabama football That's pictures. That's right. And then you said, Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank That's you. Three things. What was the fourth thing you helped me with? The fourth thing I helped you with was sunglasses. Sunglasses. The sun is right. so bright when you're out there working. I was out there in the table. Okay, community. let's try this one more time. Yes. Tater, look, I have some sunglasses for you. Thank you so oh, much. You. See, Thank boys you. and girls, it's so easy. It's now, so easy Tyler, to say those two words. Listen to this verse I'm going to share with boys and girls. And boys and girls, Mr. Mark, Mr. Cheeser, want you to remember this one, okay, and stamp this one on your heart. And it comes from the book of Psalms, and it says, Give thanks to the Lord, 
for he is good. His love endures forever. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Say it with me. Okay. Uh, give, give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Psalm 107. For he is good. His love endures forever. Yes. Give so, thanks to the Lord. Boys and girls, I was talking to Mr. Mark and Taylor about this week, so... You know, after we finish Kids Prize, let's not forget the lesson and, and let's learn to be thankful in everything we do. So here's what Mr. Cheeser and Mr. Mark want you to do this week. When you get up on Monday and it's time for school, you wake up and say, oh God, thank you so much for my clothes I have to wear that my parents have helped provide me that God you've given to me. Thank you for my frosted blueberry pop top yummy, yummy, that yummy. I have for breakfast in the mornings. And God, thank you for the air conditioning in my mommy and daddy's car that gets me to school. And for my teachers. And for my friends. And for my... And learn to say thank you in everything that you do and everything that you have. And remember to thank God for all those things. Okay? Let's say a prayer to close our lesson today. You want to pray with me, Tanner? Yes, I do, okay. Mr. Jesus. Let's say a prayer. God, we just thank you so much today for our church and so for the things Mr. Mark prayed for earlier. And uh, I'm thankful for Tater being here and, and that he was able to hear the lesson from the Bible like our boys and girls where God, your son, uh, you know, healed the people and he taught us to be thankful and, and to come back to him and say thankful because God we know that you gave us your son and you loved us so much so we could go to heaven that we always need be, to be thankful for that. Help us God every day to be thankful for all the little things we have and uh, we can't wait to come back and, and be in big church and be in kids praise again soon. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, Tater and Mr. Cheesy will see you. Have a good week. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Be safe.